I'm Frank Seppi with NPC News Online at the Pittsburgh Pro with longtime friend, fitness icon, fitness legend, fitness model. Oh, that's hey, what I want to ask you about. What are we? Mike O'Hearn. Hey, what's happening, everybody? <laughs> We're here at the Body Fortress booth, right? You're representing Body Fortress now? I am. I'm with Body Fortress, killing it over here, traveling. Always popular. I had a question for yes. you. When we got into the sport, there was no men's physique. And I always wanted to know your opinion on the men's physique division and as opposed to bodybuilding, just your general thoughts. I think you're going to say there was no Photoshop. <laughs> Because it wasn't. You know what? <laughs> when we did our first covers, real quick, yeah. when we did our first covers, there was no Photoshop. No. Also, you and I shot both off-season and off on-season. Right. So it was more, and I'm trying to say this because I want you guys to do this, it's more about the person, and it's not just the cover, it's a cover story mm -hmm. about the person that's behind the training, not just good bodies. Is there a ton of good bodies in this industry? Absolutely, yep. Tons. It's the personality that makes it different, and that's why the guys get the covers. A lot of them have the charisma of this cup. That's yeah. the problem. Yes. The thing is, what annoys me is when they call, they call us fitness models. What is when the we fitness were model? 250, 260 pounds. What are you talking about? We were 275, <laughs> 280. But we're fitness models, and when people are in, you're the original men's physique guy. I'm like, no, I'm not. It was 260 My pounds. Are 31 <laughs> inches. Not even close. <laughs> but you're right about the Photoshop because I'll look online and you'll see somebody who looks in tremendous shape. They're, you know, they're, they're shredded. Then you'll see them on stage the next day and they look nothing like the photo. It is going so far and it's, it's one of those things. And I, I, and I was thinking about this the other day because when we did our shots, it didn't matter what time of the season. We're there, we do it, we do our shots, they don't touch it, that's us. And then they meet us in person and it's like, that's the guy. Yeah. And nowadays, people come up and they'll say, no, I'm this guy or whatever, and I'm like, wow, I don't even recognize you in person. And that's yeah. the one thing, I did one photo, in my entire career, I did one photo shoot where the guy altered the pictures and Photoshopped it, I go, can't release a picture. Why is that? That's not me. And it's like today, that's just, People just instantly do that, and it's something that blows me away because I want to look yep. like I do in the magazine. When you walk up, you go, that's Michael Hearn. From a mile away, that's Michael Hearn. There's one photographer who we're meaning nameless, but his, all his covers, everyone has the same genetic abs. Everyone has eight abs, and I've shot some of these people, and they have two abs or three abs. Like It's all symmetrical eight pack and it's yes. like that's not the person it's ridiculous it's like I've, I've always believed like you know when we shot with Bob Kennedy back in the day yep. if we were out of shape and we shot off season they put a girl on the side yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my first back you had four girls my, my first two covers um I got my first cover at 20 and uh I was uh 255 just did a powerlifting meet and so they just put my face on the cover but it, the cool thing about that is in one sense that they thought that was good enough to be a cover, just a face, yeah. when it's muscle and fitness, you know. And, and then sure. the second one is, it was me with five girls. So they kind of covered me a little bit. So in a sense, that was uh, altered. But, but I continued that way. I could still do the covers, and you do. Absolutely, yeah. And you were a monster. Um, well, my first cover was Monica Brandt on my back with just my shoulders in my head. You know, it was, it, I think it was named the worst cover by Muscle Media at the time. It was a cover of Muscle Mag. <laughs> Be that as it may. Off the subject. <laughs> Here's the thing. Muscle Fitness just released their top 10 worst covers, and me with five girls was one of the worst covers. I'm pretty sure there's not a guy alive that doesn't think that's a bad When it, you did a photo shoot and got paid for it, and you got to pose with five beautiful women. Yeah, I don't know how that's a bad cover. Not for us humans. We could probably write a book on the tricks and trades of the whole covers. I remember shooting a cover with three girls in the uh, parking lot of a Chicago Muscle Mag store. They put it on the, put it on the uh, you know, winds up a cover, exotic beach in the back and all this stuff. That was the extent of the Photoshop the, back in the day. It. That was nothing right there. Nothing to the body, nothing. It was just like, you know, a backdrop. things have changed. A backdrop. Yeah. It has changed. And I guess it goes into, uh, what do I think of men's physique or, or people calling us fitness models. First yeah. of all, there's no such thing as a fitness model. No. Unless you are paying your mortgage, feeding your family, mm -hmm. um, getting your health insurance all by doing one thing, fitness modeling, yeah. then you're not a fitness model. Yeah, I, I mean, there's no, there's no such thing. There's, yeah. there's, there's guys that do endorsements or this or that, and it's like, you were never that. You were a freaking champion bodybuilder. You were strong. As I, I was there when you were yeah. doing 635 <laughs> on deads, and you were in incredible shape, and, and still are, and um, that just proves the longevity in the sport. But 
Um, it just so it shows that we have a passion for fitness and being in shape. And if we didn't get paid a nickel for doing any of the things that we've done in this industry, we would still train because that's that's how we live and that's what we love. And a lot of these people don't have the same passion. How long you been doing this? Since I'm 13 years old. Okay, nine years old. Yeah. So we were, and we're just 21 now, no, but we were way before Facebook and, yeah. and Instagram. We were before Photoshop, our, our, our magazines, our covers. So we've done this way before society could even comment on things and stuff like that. So we do this regardless. And I've trained at four in the morning my whole life. And it's one of those things that I still train at four in the morning and lift heavy ass weight regardless of the the money, regardless right. of the, the, the social media hype behind it or the fan base. We That's love passion, yeah. Could you imagine if they had Instagram and oh everything back gosh. in what we're doing like all the different covers and stuff it would be insane. Yeah, it'd be it'd be yeah, it'd be <laughs> I'm glad in a sense it didn't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. With phones, but There's I mean, some things I don't want out there. No. So what do you have going on? You're doing a, a tour? Death I am, tour? I am, yeah, a Titan tour. So I'm, I'm doing two things. I, well, three things. I'm, I'm giving lectures and seminars around the world. I'm guest posing almost every other weekend. Oh, wow. And I'm breaking the, uh, the Guinness World Record in breaking the glass. So I'm just traveling all around the world. And it's taking me around the world. Uh, going back to China, going to Australia. Um, and then United States covering everything. So, and you can follow Mike on <laughs> Instagram at Mike O'Hearn. Um, what else? Some very entertaining stuff on there, I must yeah. say. So, you should definitely check it out. You know, I mean, we could talk all day. So, I mean, I don't know. We, we have go a show. We go into everything. No, any topic you want to. Any um, topic you want to talk Ms. about. Physique. We wouldn't have won at any point in our no. career. We would never have won a men's. You're too big. You're too big. Bring it down. You're yeah, too big. Okay. That's what we would have heard. Right now, I'm 265 pounds, um, and my thighs are ginormous. No skinny so, jeans. Yeah, those skinny <laughs> jeans. My girl dresses me so, <laughs> and everybody asks about that. How do you fit in jeans? But anyways, um, I, I like men's physique for one sense is that it gives um, it gives the average guy a chance to compete and do something. Um, not everybody wants to have a complete package. They just want to have abs and then just a little bit of tone. And so that opens up to a huger market and helps the industry. I think there's something for everyone. Men's yep. physique, um, I, you know, guys train hard. I know a lot of them personally and stuff, but for me, I'll always be a bodybuilder. I always like training like a bodybuilder. I would never have done men's physique. I would have always no. been on opposing trunks. No. I would have done, but I have respect yeah. for, for what they accomplish and what they do. I'm an athlete first and foremost. I've only done this because of the fact that I started with martial arts and power. I'm an athlete first. So, uh, men's physique is great for the industry. Bodybuilding is a beautiful art piece. Yes. But I am beyond that to where I, I want the complete package, I, the superhero. I still want right. that superhero. I want to be freaking, I love being able to slam the basketball, but also being able to go in and squat 700 pounds and then having a physique that people go, that looks like a statue. So. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of men's physique. They have Javon Walker, who is an ex-NFL uh, pro bowler, who's now in men's physique. You have a guy who competed in the Nationals, who was on the Orlando Magic. So it's definitely giving needed attention to this industry, and there's definitely a need for it. But I'm just saying, for all the emails and stuff that I get out there, that I would always old be school. a bodybuilder. I'm an old school, I'm an old bodybuilder. Christopher <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's like, I like, nothing beats Arnold for me. Yeah, and uh, like Frank Zane and those guys, or uh, I'll go as far as like uh, Lee Haney, Barry DeMay, and Barry DeMay, Barry DeMay and the DeMay tattoo, fly. and him and Tony Pearson with the uh, Miami Vice ad back in the yeah. 80s. Come on, I love that <laughs> stuff. I miss those covers. I miss those. He's no more. Everything's web now. Yeah. Is there anybody that you look to right now? And as far as you mentioned Arnold, you mentioned uh, Lee Haney. Do you look to anybody now and say, you know what? I want to look like that person, or do you have your own vision of what you want to look like? And no, I don't have anybody you that's out. To be no, 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 no. I, I'm still uh, Barry DeMay, Gary Stridham, yeah. Lee Haney. Those are still, uh, to me, better physiques than anything I've ever seen since. Um, it did, be reason because uh, I'm a big guy, and so that's what I relate Always to. Taller, yeah. And uh, I just like being able to see the guy on stage, but I also like to see him in day-to-day -day life and, and being that superhero walking in. That's, it's me, it's, it's about the superhero guy walking in the door, and that's why I would be never... Larger than life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Larger than yeah. life, and 
Well, your thing too is strength. I yeah. mean, you want to talk about some of the amazing lifts that you've done in the past. Yeah. Well, some of the stuff I've done, I've squatted over 800, I've done 775 on deadlift for a couple, and I've benched 600 raw. And the people, it's funny, it's because they ask me now, they go, uh, well, that was when during your prime. Actually, I'm setting PRs now. I just did a 500 on incline for a double. Um, so I'm still setting records, still having fun with this stuff. And it's the by far the reason I'm still here and still doing what I do is because of the blunt force trauma with the way I train. I always go heavy. No, I don't go light. Um, I just stay with the basic exercises. I don't get with the new age. Um, I, if, if I do any new age or athletic stuff, it's outside of the gym. I don't go in and do CrossFit or, right. or cardio training in the gym. I do that stuff outside. Have you ever gotten hurt, injured? Never got hurt. Never got hurt. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's, you know, it's one of those things. It's uh, never got hurt. But again, it goes back to I was already competing in powerlifting at 13, so I was building that strength and that, yeah. that, that, that the connected tissue. That's one of the biggest things, too. I don't know why this is, but the new generation, the 20-year-olds that are on Instagram and everything, mm -hmm. they honestly believe that muscle makes strength. And has nothing to do with it. I'll take right. a 160-pound wrestler that will toss around more weight than a 250-pound bodybuilder. It's connective tissue. That's what it is. That's what strength comes from, is connective tissue. And I'm lucky enough to, to have not known that when I was that young, but to realize it later on that that's what's kept me healthy. Do you have a crew of guys you train with every morning? I got a Titan crew. I got, I got a crazy crew of guys and girls that come in and squat dead and bench with me. And I do it twice a week, uh, squat twice a week, bench twice a week, and deadlift. You, you guys do the old Arnold, go into the forest, have a squat party, have a fight? We do crazy shit, man. We do like whoever quits first on squats. And again, this is not for what you should do. It's I'm at a point where I can just do this for fun. Um, but we'll go in and we'll squat, and the first one that quits buys breakfast for everybody. So that makes me like, you know. It's I'm tough. You, a lot of people have those alligator arms where they don't want to put their hands in their pocket and stuff. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> and where um, are you training now every morning? Goals Gym Venice. Still? Yeah, still yeah. Goals Gym Venice. I love it. Home yeah. away from home? My, my, it's my house, baby. Come in there. Come down. And those of you familiar with Mike's Instagram, t talk about Striker and the other pups you got. Striker. <laughs> oh, I'm going to answer some questions here. This will be for all you guys that ask me, how do I get Striker to go everywhere? All right. So I am just the handler. Stryker is actually uh, a hospice dog. And so when I travel to the United States, she actually visits hospitals and does work. Mm -hmm. And that's how I do it. So it's not one of these things that it's just because I'm Mike or whatever or did TV shows, I don't get the privilege of taking the dog everywhere. It's because she, I actually do charity work for her. Um, what are some of the charities? That uh, the charity work is the hospice. Oh, okay. Is the hospice. So I take her to hospitals and she visits patients that are dying. And um, yeah. Right. It's, it's, it's uh, in one sense, it's incredible, but in the other sense, it really grounds me and makes me appreciate what I got. Well, thank you for taking the time. Yep. Always a pleasure. It's Mike O'Hearn, Body Fortress, Frank Seppi, NPCNewsOnline.com. I'm hanging out with Frank. <laughs>